If you're injecting insulin into the same spot on your abdomen day after day, you're doing it wrong. That can mean that your insulin won't be working as well or that you develop lumpy tissue. So let's talk about how to do it right. We'll cover where you can inject insulin, why repeating the same spot is a problem, and what you can do about it. First things first, abdominal insulin injections. You've probably been trained on how to do an injection in your abdomen. And I know that was the first place that the nurse told me to inject my insulin when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes over 28 years ago. But you can inject insulin in other places and continuing to use the same place on the abdomen over and over can unfortunately lead to some issues. Insulin should be injected into the fat layer under the skin on either the abdomen, so staying a few inches away from the belly button, your outer thighs, hips, buttocks, or back of the arms. Think of it like this, skin, fatty tissue, muscle. You wanna inject into that fatty layer and not into the muscle. But with proper injection technique, this should not be a problem. Check out this video for a complete guide. Since I made a lot of videos just like this one to give you a resource to optimize your diabetes management, remember to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out. Insulin still works if injected into the muscle, but it can really sting and it can absorb way faster, which unfortunately increases the risk of hyperglycemia. And absorption rate is something to think about with the different injection sites as well, as the absorption rate can vary depending on what injection sites you choose. That, combined with it just being a little easier to do an injection in the abdomen, is probably why it often ends up being the favorite spot for a lot of us. From my experience, my absorption is pretty much the same for abdomen as well as arms, and it's a little slower if I inject into my thighs or my lower glutes. So for me, I inject my rapid acting insulin into my abdomen and the backside of my arms, and I inject my long acting insulin into my glutes or my thighs. It could be an issue to inject insulin into the same spot over and over again. Although insulin injections usually are painless, more or less, injecting into the same spot repeatedly can lead to scar tissue. And scar tissue can unfortunately mean that your insulin won't be absorbed as well, meaning that it won't work as well. It can also lead to inflammation or breakdown of fat tissue. This is called lipodystrophy, and it can cause lumps, swelling, or thickness of the skin. Even though I've been injecting insulin since 1997, I've been fortunate enough to stay clear of that. But about half of us who inject insulin, unfortunately develop lipodystrophy, and most often, it comes down to insulin injection site rotation. And site rotation is something that I focus a lot on. And insulin injection site rotation simply means that you don't inject into the same spot over and over. There are some different techniques on how to do this, um, but let me show you mine. So for my rapid acting insulin, that's my mealtime insulin, I rotate between my arms and my abdomen. So I'll start on my right arm in the morning, then I'll switch to the right side of the abdomen, the left side of the abdomen, and then the left arm, and then rotate that around. This is my side rotation sheet for my long acting insulin. This is what it looks like after just a month of injections. And I'll explain it because it doesn't really make a lot of sense like this, but every little mark here indicates an insulin injection. You see the numbers here, that's just a sequence that I take the insulin off. And I have six different sequences. Each has six marks for each sequence. So that means it's 36 injections in just over a month. And that means that when I follow this, I won't inject in the same place twice during a whole month. So let me just show you the idea here. I draw it up. It's sort of the bikini line here. Uh, so this is my backside. And then imagine like a pair of granny panties. They look like this, okay? So here we have the legs and the thighs. They come down here. Well, bear with me, I'm not a great artist. <laughs> but L stands for left and R stands for right. Pretty basic here. I'll usually start up here in the upper line of my bikini line. And let's say this morning I took an injection here, so I'll just make a mark. And now I know that I injected here and I won't inject here tomorrow. So next day I go to the left side, right side, back and forth and continue like that. And here we go, that's six days. Then I move to my second area, which is the lower part of my bikini line. And again, same process. I make a little mark whenever I take an injection. So this would be sort of my lower back side, my glutes, and then my thighs down here to the side. And this is number six. Again, my thighs, this is kind of where I end up. So very simple, very low tech. And for me, this works. I haven't had any issues with lumps or any other significant issues. 
And this little notepad goes with me whenever I travel. I just pop it into the bag with my long acting insulin and it provides me structure and make it possible for me to consistently rotate my sights. Now let's talk about something that can make a big difference when it comes to comfort and development of scar tissue. And that is your needle choice as well as your needle routines. For the longest time, I thought all pin needles were the same. They're not. Choosing the right needle for you matters. Generally, the medical community leans towards the use of shorter needles. Interestingly enough, I was prescribed a 12 millimeter needle initially and used that pretty much through all, throughout my whole, let's call my diabetes career here. And I just happened to learn about shorter needles. Now, how do you actually know which length that's right for you? Remember, insulin as well as GLP-1s need to be injected into the fatty tissue right underneath the skin. You want the insulin or GLP-1 to be injected into that fatty layer, not into the muscle. And of course you want it to go all the way through the skin. On average, human skin is about 1.9 to 2.4 millimeters. And that is regardless of BMI or body type. So that means that a needle, the length of four to five millimeters should work for anyone, every body type. But that doesn't mean that you can't use a longer needle. Just remember that it does increase the risk of bruising, bleeding, and pain. If you choose to use a longer needle, you still need to pinch the skin up or do a 45 degree angle to avoid injecting directly into the muscle. And then there's how often do we change our needles because it's single use. And I know that not everyone adheres to this. If you're already changing your needle every time, well done. Let me tell you why this matters. Leaving a needle on your pen between injections gives air direct access to your insulin, which unfortunately can impact the quality. It also raises the risk of infections, which is overall nasty business. Even after just one insulin injection, you see that up here, the tip starts to get dull. The coating on the needle wears off and it just loses its sharpness. That can mean more pain, more tissue trauma, and potentially worse absorption. So are you convinced yet? If you're not changing a needle every time because you don't want to carry around those used needles, there's a fix. I found this little needle cutter on Amazon and it's basically a portable shorts container. You simply insert the needle, push down on the plunger, and then it cuts off the needle. The rest, the plastic part can go directly into the trash. Now we covered the how to, the mechanics, but as anyone living with diabetes knows, there's a lot more to healthy blood sugars than just injecting insulin correctly. There's also a lot of other components that goes into achieving great blood sugars in your ideal A1C. So I also created a complete A1C guide that you can find right here. And if you haven't already, please like this video and leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my channel. Remember to turn on notifications. That way you won't miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.